a sensitive question. During your infidelity with those creatures, those demonic women, did you for one instant taste of their blood? No. 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 Good. Then you have not infected your blood with the terrible disease that destroyed poor Lucy. Doctor, you must understand. I doubted everything. Even my mind. I was impotent with fear. I know. Got him. Oh, that Anthony Hopkins. He's quick on the draw. He's like, oh, Keanu, I, I know you're impotent, Keanu. Don't play that game with me. Uh, this is Nick the Rat Radio. We're having um, uh, a good time tonight. It's January 12th, 2020. It's 11 o'clock at night. We're about to open up a, um, a black and tan. We're not trying to be racist down here. We want all the colors of beer. And tasty. And um, we'll also be drinking a whole box of wine, too. Why the hell not? Well, got this Nighthawk Black Miss Malbec in here. Dark Malbec. Ow. So we'll be having a fun time with that. Um, tonight's episode's going to need a lot of fuel, to say. Um, if you... If you have kid, if you have kids in the vicinity, you might want to report yourself. Unless they're your own kids, if they're yours, then just tell them to go to bed. It's late anyway. It's eleven o'clock at night, at least in the East Coast. Go, go to bed, kid. Yeah, Blitz. I'm talking to you. Go to bed, Blitz. You're, I don't know if you're gonna be able to handle tonight's show. It's a little bit of an adult topic. It's, um... Yeah, the scene, the theme was set to paranormal sex toys. Uh, hold on a second. Let me bring up my notes here. We, we got, um... We got a book last week from this guy, Dr. Richard Johnson. He was, a uh, he studied at, I think, Moorhead State University. Really smart guy. Read the book. Uh, it was called uh, Paranormal Sex Toys. Uh, we gathered a couple of tidbits with it. I was talking to him over email. He didn't want to be on the show. I don't know why. It was a great book. I keep it on my, my nightstand. I, sometimes I can't, I can't get to sleep until I read a couple chapters of it. It's, it's really... Whoa. That's weird. Really good. Hold on, what's going on with the lighting here? There we go, I can kind of see myself now. I don't know what's happening. But anyway, what is definitely happening is that we're going to be um, giving giving you some content some, some content from the book for free. He, he, it's like a $20 book. He put a lot of research into it. The thing is thick, it's very thick. So we're going to be giving you a little um, giblets from it, basically. Some little pieces of it. Um, it's going to be... We try to edit it down a little bit, but we're basically going to be giving it to you uh, raw, I guess you could say. So if if you like getting it raw and and you're not young and you can handle an adult conversation, then tonight's episode is going to be for you. Uh, oh man, Quercus in the chat. There was like three chapters about the succubus and body parts from her, but that didn't make the cut for tonight. Fedora the Explorer? Yes, I am. Tonight's a total Fedora night, if you know what I'm trying to say. What? The world's unraveling really quick lately. The, it's. I can't. It's more of a tearing. I think there's there's a tearing going on uh, recently. There's sometimes the unraveling is going really fast, but sometimes it, it, 
You know, like when you're cutting uh, wrapping paper and you put the scissors on it and you're just like, Shh. sometimes it just fucking tears. You know, I think we're currently within a, a giant tear. That's, that's where we are right now. So it's a little scary. And I think learning about, you know, some of the extra dimensional uh, arousal, a dazzle arousal uh, methods of the universe could, could be really helpful for not just me, but for you and your loved ones. And I don't know really where I'm going with this, but we're going to get into this book. We're going to read some, uh, some content from it. We're gonna, we got some, uh, I think, Zin, Diane, did Zindu send any news? That was a, that was a, Diane, that was a long way to go just to say yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I think I might know why. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. We do have, we do have a little bit of, let's <laughs> blow the whole entire app. What? There's no, there's no blow in the sewers. It's too damp down here. One time I ordered a whole, like, five pounds of it, because, you know, I make a lot of money doing this podcasting. And uh, it just, it just the, the moisture of the sewer, when I, when I unwrapped it, it, it was just like a solid rock. And, uh, it was a waste. All right. Let's start the show with how we usually start the show, with some music for the show that's delivered to you um, by, by uh, creatives. On SoundCloud, this is a all creative CC by 3.0 music. You can find my list of all the songs you'll hear tonight uh, by going to nicktherat.com slash click social and SoundCloud. And yeah, you know what? I'm, uh, I, I'm, I, I don't. I don't. I don't want to. I don't, don't want to go over links. I can go over links the entire... How about I give you the IP address of where you should go to find every bit of information? Like, if you want Nick the Rat sound... Can I just type in Google or... Let's go to Bing. Let's just do a quick test. I, I'm just curious here. Because I get email... I get like 50 emails um, a week a bit, just about this. Um, let's Bing. Bing. Let's first Google Bing. And then... Google Bing click. There we go. Uh, and now we're in Bing and we're gonna we're gonna do Nick the Rat Sound Cloud. Let's see if that stream Nick the Rat music on SoundCloud. I don't have music on SoundCloud. Well, what happens if I click there? Oh, it's got my likes. 2,325 likes. Yeah, look at that. That's all pretty much all the music from every episode of this show. Almost. There's a couple episodes where that were special or different, you know, not on SoundCloud. But either way, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm just, you could keep on, you could keep emailing me about it. Just keep on emailing me about it. Fucking dare you! All right, let's um, Nick the Rat song clown. What's a song clown? Anyway, let's listen to uh, the first song of the evening, which is Jiggler with Love Trip.
Blitz, you're crazy. Blitz, you're crazy. Okay, um, I'm reading chat. Sometimes the chat, if you want to go to join the chat, you can go to, um, maybe you could Bing that too. I don't, you could chat on Twitch, Discord, IRC. Figure it out quick before you miss the show. There's only about four hours left. The, unra the unraveling will occur. But it won't finish tonight. There'll still be some thread left. Don't worry. <sighs> All right, this book, this book was really powerful for me. Okay, let me, let me just tell you about this, this guy's, uh, the prestiges, the prestige, the prestige, the, uh, because if you're reading something about paranormal sex toys called Parasexual, I think that was the title. Did I read the title? Yeah, it was Parasexual, Paranormal Sex Toys by Dr. Richard Johnson. Um, I just want to give you some of his credentials here. This guy's no joke. Uh, let me read this. He sent this to me. He, this, you know, if a doctor tells you their credentials, you have to believe him. Uh, and he told me, he told me that he sent this to me in an email. I think he even sent a picture of a plaque or something on his teeth. Uh, we got Dr. Richard Johnson joined MSU. That's uh, Moorhead State University. Uh, after receiving his PhD from the University of Tennessee, Knoxville in 2017, he is currently serving as an assistant professor in the School of Ancient Dark Arts and Angel... Uh, I thought that said angel. It says... Uh, what? Anal engineering. Uh, his research focuses on using quantum nanotechnology to develop rapid and portable tales from the before times that he can write down for post-fun readers for the nowadays. Huh. Uh, he also works on skin-interfaced wearable biomedical sensors that provide non-invasively real-time orgasms created by mythical, fic uh, mythical fictional creatures that definitely do exist in the not times. How could you, how could you say any of this is not legit? Now, if you're a if you're a non-believer or a naysayer, say, look, there's always going to be people that believe, and then there's going to be non-believers. There's going to be uh, left, there's going to be right, there's going to be red, there's going to be blue, there's going to be girl, there's going to be boy, there's going to be in, there's going to be out, there's going to be above, and there's going to be below. But the world is not um, not black and white. It's not hot. It's not cold. It just is, you know. So. It, if you have an opinion, if you think bananas taste better than apples, that's fine. Just don't call the people that like the apples more than bananas. Don't call them assholes, okay? Unless they're throwing apples at your face, you know. Uh, the whole sticks and stones thing, right? Yeah, but the chat has color. Okay, look. Now, this, this book really, really influenced me. You know when you read something and it just, um, you kind of feel different? You feel like you've been, like, life changed? It happens very rarely. Very rarely will you just be sitting there in your bathtub surrounded by candles, reading a book by a, a very, very smart doctor. And it just, the words hit you. This, this book, let me tell you something. Uh, it, 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 it described an item in it, a parasexual item, a paranormal sex toy from, I think it's from ancient times. Yeah, it was from ancient times. I'll tell you all about this item, but... I just want to say that I read about it, and then I had the scientist in the sewer develop one for me. And I'm going to be using it throughout the night, okay? Now, this one's not explicitly a sex toy, but it has to do with the genitalia, and it's um, an object that came from, from the, some brilliant people using mythical powers mystical, mythical, who knows what.
Stop being retarded, Net Net. Um, we got the smartest people in the sewer to recreate this item that I'm about to tell you about. Now I'm going to read this here. This one, the whole book is broken up into chapters, into sections, and into indexes. It's very, very, very thorough. But I'm just, I'm just going to be reading this uh, one part here uh, for, for you because, once again, this book, it's, it takes time to write books, right? You can't just, you can't just like, give a book away for free. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta sell it, right? So we got the first thing I'm gonna be talking to you about is the, um, it's called the Pharaoh's Testicle Tugger. Now, let me tell you about this. Let me tell you about this Pharaoh's testicle tugger. And it just pulled on my heart, my heartstrings. Uh, all right, so this is this is part of the this is this is the excerpt he told me to read here. Uh, ancient Egypt's fifth dynasty didn't just leave us with a pyramid. Then then's ruler, Sahura, Sahur, Sahur, S-A-H-U-R-E. You can look him up, he's real. Uh, wanted to not only be the leader of Egypt, but he also wanted to have the lowest hanging fruit. If you know what I'm trying to say here. Uh, to, to accomplish this, he had his highest academic slave mages create a device called the testicle tugger, which is uh, his best guess, judging by the hieroglyphics that were accompanying it, that he was uh, he studied these things for a long time. He, this guy's smart. He knows a lot of stuff. Uh, he writes that it was the shape, this is the part that sold me. This is when I had the scientists look at this, recreate it, make me one. Uh, it's, it's, it's the shape of a, a small, tight, yet comfortable fitting ring. It would clamp around the top of the testicles right below the shaft. So you got the shaft and you got the testicles. This thing clips right there, okay? So around, uh, attached to that, was a, a hempen string and clay weights were attached to it. And once a month, they'd add a new ring to it. Now this, this thing blew me away because in the sewer, to get away with pretty much anything you're doing down here, you, you need to have, you need your balls to be close to the floor. Just saying, the, the closer to the floor your balls are, the more respect you get around here. And I read this, and he, I, I updated the technology. Hempen string? No, we have uh, nanofiber carbon uh, strings, and uh, and for the weights, we didn't use clay. We just used straight up um, iron. Because I need to, I need these balls to stretch fast. And instead of, like, once per month adding a new ring, I'm adding, like, five-pound rings almost every hour. Maybe even more. Like, here, um, Diane, can you, can you put another one on right now? Just put... Ah! Right, they, it's tugging a little bit more. Yeah. Just give me another one for the viewers. We're, we're going to be putting... We're going to be putting these on all night. But I could take it. Ah, there's another... Oh! The, when it hits the bottom of the thing, it, it hurts a little bit. I can almost feel like my tongue getting pulled back into my throat. But I could take this. Ooh. All right. Uh, we're going to... I think I might vomit. We got we to gotta, uh, take a quick break. We're going to listen to some more music. We'll be right back. We got Dixie with Autumn in the City. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. We'll be right back. Ah, stop!
Uh, welcome back. Uh, this show's getting a little intense. You know, when, when you start getting things on your balls, you kind of just got to take a little bit of break. We're going to open up the phone lines here. If you'd like to call in, uh, give me a call at 917-719-5923. Um, whoa, where's the... Whoa, what the hell? What is going on here? Hello? The phone line working? Ow. Well, that's a complete, uh, ow. I don't know if the phone line's working. Well, let's, let's try the phone line. 917. I think my balls are attached to my brain. 917-709-5923. I am on hold after making a purchase, apparently, on Amazon. Over a thousand dollars. It was a MacBook Pro and some AirPods. I don't think this is going to go well. They might recognize my phone number and I have to sit on hold for an elongated period. It's a long time. But uh, stay vigilant, folks, and the listener for these scams. Please stay on the line. Step You'll out of the office and H. have fun with these fuckers and they harass you. And it doesn't do me any good to block it. Uh, I might have to start diverting these to a secondary voicemail and then send Nick the clip that's copied to the voicemail. And this isn't going to go well. Adios, my bonus. Well, that was a complete waste of, I think, everybody's time. But th oh, thank you for the call. And cheers to you, sir. And sticking it to the man by waiting on hold and wasting somebody else's time. By wasting our time. Let's, uh... Ah... <sighs> Let's just talk about some other stuff here. That's totally out of blue. Uh, I, f I finally beat Cyberpunk 2077. I got all the way up towards the end, and, and the ending which wouldn't fucking end, and I just had to, like, rush it through it. I, if, the game is basically, like, Fallout. There's a couple of cool missions. There's a lot of titties, which is okay, I guess. Uh, but you become so powerful at some point in all of these games where it just becomes kind of like a joke. Like I was able to, I was able to sit in in a bathroom and just make everybody uh, commit suicide, basically. But that's like a feature of the game. So that kind of sucked. But I was happy to delete it off my hard drive. It gave me some space. So that was good. Um, Let's see, what else, what else can I talk about while I pack this bowl and uh, kill some time? Uh, I've been watching, I think it's called Station Eleven. My Station Eleven was pretty cool. It was... I didn't finish it yet. It's on, it's on Hobo Max. Hobo Max, it's got the... Uh, got the chick from Cult, uh, Halt and Catch Fire in it. She looks like a gazelle. She's really, she really weird looking. Yeah, I'm, I'm killing time. I'm just killing time, talking to you about some, um, some stuff I've, I've uh, done during the week while, I, while I just, you know, pack this bowl. And maybe you'll get something out of it if you want to see, uh, if you want to see some, uh, some good stuff or play some good games. You could probably skip Cyberpunk game unless you really love. Uh, like a Fallout game, Fallout games. If you like, if you really like Fallout games, and I don't know, I'd pass on it. 
I put I put a lot of time into it. I put at least put like over a hundred hours into it. I think. Yeah, I, I still I gotta play Red Dead Redemption Two. Still, ha I played. I started playing it like a year and a half ago, and then because I played a lot of uh, GTA before that, and I just I'm a little tired of Rockstar games and just games where it's like uh, go to the yellow dot on the map. And kill everybody. Go to the yellow dot on the map and kill everybody. I know it, there's more to the game than that. And there's a lot of... Uh, cowboys are cool. And the story is really good. I know the story is really good. But I was just... Uh, you know, I'll play it. It's still on my hard drive. It's, it's still there. Uh, oh, I've been uh, playing Half-Life Alex. I'm a big Half-Life fan. I always loved that uh, Half-Life was a spin-off of The Mist by Stephen King. That always kind of blew my mind how they... How artists steal other artists' work and make new art. Uh, but yeah, Half-Life Alex is pretty cool. I can only play for about 40 minutes at a time, though. VR is, hurts the head. Uh, but I do know that there's a new Oculus Facebook stalking controller coming out. Probably next year, the Oculus Pro or 3. It's probably going to be a little less nauseating to play games with. Hopefully. I don't know. All right, I'm almost done packing this bowl here. After I pack the bowl, we're going to listen to some music, and then we're going to thank some people. Because we have to, we have to thank people for, for this show. And sometimes... Sometimes the people that I think give a give a call. I don't know if this person ever thing, but either way, let's listen to this phone phone voice voicemail. Yay! Hey, 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 hey you may, may, hey, mail sucks. Yeah, you heard me. It sucks. It, 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 it blows, man. It sucks. Yeah. Okay, you're you're welcome, sir. Uh, ooh, uh, an exciting news. I, I, I'm 99% sure um, um, Jonathan Fletcher, actually that's not his name, because on his birth certificate that I have a copy of that I have hanging in my bathroom, it says John Fletcher, uh, will be on the show next week. I think live too. So if, you, uh, if you're a fan of the hog story or uh, Canadians or Texans, and give a give a call in next week, and you could talk to to Mister John Fletcher too. We'll be uh, having I got I got some things lined up for him. It should be pretty fun. You know, if I, if I have a guest on, I like to I like to entertain the guest as I entertain uh, the listeners as well, because it's entertaining me too. I don't do this for you. I do this for me. I like uh, I like drinking wine reading books about paranormal sex toys and smoking weed and uh you you you're you're just you, you, you're you're uh, the audience is just a bah, an afterthought no nah, i'm joking the audience is actually the only reason i do this i actually i got a gun to my head right now there's a Guy in a white lab coat standing right behind me. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're we're about uh, done packing this here Dynavap induction box thing. Let, let's let it rip. I don't know if we could. Uh, I you, know, you might hear the pop. Let's see. Oh, that means it's good. That means it's good to go. Usually I wait like a second or two more. Oh boy. Uh -huh. 
Yeah. Yummy. Paranormal sex bong would be cool. Uh, 917-719-5923. I think the... Oh, the phone lines are... Now they're open. If you'd like to give a call in right now, I'll leave the... Yeah, I'll... I'll um, yeah, the phone line's open right now. If you would like to call in and talk about um, uh, uh, paranormal sex toys or... Uh, uh, or video games. Call me at 917-719-5923. You could give a you could you could be you could be live on the phone right now with with Nick the Rat and talking to Sewer Chat as well. Just like uh, this person tried to do, but apparently they just left a voicemail. Yo, Nick the Rick, my guy, what is going on? Um, I saw you liked my track on SoundCloud, Different Struggle. Ooh, good looks, bro. I'm checking out your SoundCloud like now. Thank you. And I'm I'm listening to your show right now. And all right, bye. Oh, you're you're coming up. Oh, let's see. I played song two. You are song six. That was that was Rid Kid, apparently. He just said a uh, a different struggle. That's uh that's coming up later in, in the show. That's that's a first. Rid Kid, you're the first time an artist has uh, called the show before I haven't played your song. But I did dig it. And that's why it's here. But uh, we're not playing that right now. We're going to play um, another song by somebody called G Max. Ancient Wars. After that, we're going to thank some people. Then we're going to get right back into this this book. The big, filthy, disgusting book. And uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. But, uh, Diana, is the phone line still open? Yeah, turn the phone line off while the song's playing. Oh, somebody's calling in right now. Hold on. Let's, let's answer the phone. Hello, caller. Oh, my gosh. Hello. Is this is this Fran Drescher? I'll be whoever you want me to be, baby. Ooh, can you be uh can you be Fran and I could be that rich British guy? All right, only if you're on top. Uh, uh Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. What's going on? I'm Fran. Hi Fran. Fran, Fran. I have I have about 300 children that need a nanny. Oh my gosh, I just so happen to have 300 kids, so um, I'm here for it. We could start a little army. Oh my god, we could do so much more than that. And kids will do whatever you tell them to do, sometimes. If you have a, Literally anything. If you strap them up with electrodes. Right? Yeah. Give them a little lobotomy action. They could be our little puppets. Like little little puppet masters who control the kids. That would be a weird TV yeah. show. You know, I think it would have a lot of viewers. Yeah. Uh, uh, caller, have you ever uh, have you ever had an experience with a a, par a paranormal sex toy? I have actually fucked a ghost. Wow. Yeah. So that's like even better. Yeah, that's not even like a toy. That's just like a, a past person. Yes, but it is paranormal. That is paranormal. That is paranormal. And, and I guess it yeah. was like a no strings attached kind of deal. So I mean, in a sense, it was kind of like a toy. A toy. Yeah, yeah. That is that is. If you were using it for your satisfaction, then I would say that's a that's a that's a toy, right? What's the definition of toy? Right. I don't know. I, uh, let's look this something up. Something to be played with. Uh, t what is a toy? Wikipedia. Uh, it's an item that is used primarily by sex at Oh, yeah, I guess that's it. Okay, yeah. Um, wow, Wikipedia is getting really X-rated. I didn't know they didn't know they went in that direction. I'm gonna go donate a lot more money to them. No, <laughs> you should. <laughs> Wait, that was Spankopedia. Oh crap. 
I gotta, oh, ch- I gotta change my bookmarks. <laughs> Have you ever had sex with a ghost or a paranormal toy? Uh, well, I got this ancient pharaoh's testicle tuggers on right now. Maybe I could add a, another weight to it. Hold on a second. Let me, get, let me slap this. Nice. Diane, hit. Oh. Wow. You need to give Diane a raise. They're hanging so low. <laughs> poor Diane. Oh, she's not poor. She gets paid well. Well, probably not well enough. <sighs> well, you know, n- nobody gets Based paid on well on what I well, uh, Wait, has Diane been talking to you? Diane, I told you, you can't be talking to people outside the sewer. She writes us letters. Now, Diane does whatever I tell her to do, so it's... Ah, I'm sorry, okay, it's, you're, you're the boss. <laughs> yeah, be careful what you say to her while she's adjusting your clamps. She's, she's got... She's got the button on the clamp thing. This is this is bad. Call her. Add 20 pounds, Diane. This, 20 call pounds. her. Come on. Cu- hold on one second. Hold on. Did you get the ghost? Did you get the number? Maybe you could. Uh, Who, me? Yeah. Did you get the ghost number? The, the... Oh, no, it wasn't that good. I, uh, I told him to kick rocks, just like I'm about to tell you. Wait, he wasn't that good? That sucks. You have a you have a life changing experience and it didn't really change your life. I guess that's not really a life changing experience then. Or call her? Watch out for that ghost. I think it got him. I think it got her. Well, well, thanks for that story. Let's listen to some more music. We'll be right back with more Nick the Rat Radio. We got G Max with Ancient Wars.
Hello, caller. Are you there? Caller? Can you, I'm here. Can you please turn up your uh, voice box? I'm, I'm sorry. Am I not loud? You're a little low. Sorry. It's How okay. about now? Oh, yeah, it's fine. It's perfect. Isn't it weird that we, uh, we we vibrate our voice box to make noise? Kind of. I Well, have you ever heard anybody that doesn't have a voice box? No. Not, I mean, is really? it when they put, like, the, uh, the, the mechanical thing up to their throat and it goes, Yeah, yeah, kind of. Does that Does that even work if you don't have a voice box? Kind of a little. I mean, some guys that have, like, a trach and they kind of lose the ability to speak and they got to plug a hole. It's kind of hard to understand them, but, uh, they manage, you know. You find a way. We always find a way, but it's is it is it really our our voice? We're 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 physically tightening our throat and moving it up and down, and then we pass air through it, and that's what makes the noise, right? Creating resonance across your voice box. And and there's your, muscles that are squishing it, or is there muscles in the voice your, box? <clears throat> is there really a box in there? I'm really confused. A moist, a moist, a moist, <laughs> moist box. I love me a moist box. <laughs> Don't we all? As long as it's not like paranormal and haunted, maybe I guess. Or filled with a uh, moss, a good, um, mossy moss, uh, <laughs> a mossy mo moist. I can't even say that. Can you say moisty? A, moist. a, a, a fucking mossy moist box? A moist. What the hell's a moisty? Uh, was moss? A mossy? A mossy moist? Oh, a mossy box. A mossy? A is it... <laughs> a mossy moist box? Yeah, that is a that's a little bit of a tongue twister there. Moss doesn't even sound real anymore. Mas. Huh. That sounds like Mas. more in Spanish. <laughs> Mas fries. <I> can. Ma <laughs> is a paranormal sex toy really, is it a blessing in disguise or is it a, a problem? Uh, well, there definitely, there's definitely sometimes issues with these things, but ah, I mean, they're they're all blessings. Every single one is a, a, a it's a beautiful thing. It's from it's from another dimension. Sometimes even maybe because paranormal that's a that's a large umbrella. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it could be both demonic and. Uh... I don't know what the hell's the opposite of demonic. <laughs> Saintly. Uh, yeah. Heavenly. You probably wouldn't want know. either extreme. You probably want something right down the middle. Are demons are demons want. even bad? Are there <laughs> this actually this is this is kind of weird. Uh in in Dungeons and Dragons, the wizards of the coast are they they don't like um they don't like that there's racism in their in their books. Or class, or uh, uh, not race. What are they? You know, like there's orcs. Class. You know, yeah, like, well, it's always class in that. In but like, like, like uh, um, they're they're mm -hmm. cannon fodder, like orcs and goblins and all that. Like in the books, they're usually they say that they're like just inherently evil. So all orcs are are evil. Uh, they're having to come out with books where where they say that that's not true. That some orcs. <laughs> Are good orcs. <laughs> Do you think somewhere there was orcs that got upset that they were being betrayed as bad? <laughs> they changed it for PC reasons. 
Yeah, but that doesn't even make sense. Politically, I mean, it, it does a little bit. Ali, because uh, well, no, it doesn't, it doesn't you're matter. You're applying some sort of social construct to fictional characters. It's like... It also doesn't really matter <laughs> either. Because <laughs> exactly. nobody plays D&D to the book completely anyway. If they do, they're... Hopefully they're DMing. Yeah. yeah. That's what wrecks everything. When you apply some sort of like Rule. external... <laughs> real world social construct to anything it seems to wreck it well for the most there, part is there any think? sex toys that are um, umbrellas they, they there need there should be like an umbrella sex toy or something or a, <laughs> it's got the hook on the bottom sometimes let's make that thing vibrate you don't even have to use your hands to hold umbrella it or, or a small umbrella Oh, like a full size umbrella. You could like jam it up in somewhere and then you don't, you get your hands free. Hmm. The old singing in the rain is what Oof. you're saying. Yeah. Imagine if uh, Fred Astaire had uh, two hands to go around those light poles. Was for <laughs> was it Fred Astaire or Frank Sinatra jumping all and Frank Sinatra doesn't, well, he, did he dance like that? No, that was, uh, I believe that was Fred Astaire. I think you were right. Yeah. But then I was like, am I? No, I think you were. Sometimes you get things wrong. I think that would have been that would have been probably shot in New York too. I thought that was like shot on a soundstage. Well, I mean, whatever, New York. Wasn't it? Wasn't even rain. That was actually hobo piss. They put uh, hobos on the roof. That's. <laughs> that <doesn't make laughs> it sounds sense. legit. I do- definitely believe that. I'm singing in the hobo piss. Just singing in the hobo piss. <laughs> what a glorious feeling. Isn't it weird that, oh, you're not that there's still you're homeless knocker, people? Call, call her. Let's talk about homeless people instead of uh, paranormal sex toys for a second. Okay. Do you think there will ever be a time without homeless people? Mm, I mean, I hope there would be, but it's probably not going to happen. What is, what is the main reason for, for home? Some people might just want to be homeless. I think some people do. I mean, so, I think it's, if some people want definitely it, then a mental happen. Yeah. There's a mental state that goes into it. Cause I, uh, well, I don't have a home. I live in a sewer. Well, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of homeless. I don't pay, I don't pay rent in. Yeah, should, um, this, Isn't it a home to you, though? Home is where the heart is. So every, every, the homelessness is cured. There you go. There's no more homelessness. If you have a heart, you have a home. Homelessness is now just a word. Do you think it becomes uh, a state of mind with some people or no? There's definitely mental reasons why some people are homeless, for sure. Yeah. Then there's yeah. financial reasons, which might be related to mental sometimes as well. Who knows? Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of gray area. And we could just move people into the gray area and have them build gray homes or something. <laughs> you, um, you think if you built them a home, though, that they would accept it and move in and live there? And, I don't know. You know. And if they did, would they fit <clears throat> in with the other people around them? Mm. That's kind of push, pushing them into some sort of social construct. Um, that's maybe they don't want to be a part of me. That's why they left the uh, normalness of life in some some sort of sense. I don't know. One time I got really I drunk and I woke up me. in a in a muskrat's house. It's, they're they're a little they're a little bit different. They smell funny. 
<laughs> they have a musk about them. Great in the sack when you're drunk, but... Were you saying you had muskrat love, or...? I'm going to say that night never happened. It was probably... That was, um... was it muskrat Sally? I heard about her. She's so hot. Or maybe muskrat Sue. Was was I talking to you about the strongman competition? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Was steroids? Was steroids part of the uh, discussion? Ow! I right, call her. I got. I got to thank some. I got to thank some people for helping to make this show possible. That's uh, that's a good idea. Right, I shall. Uh... Shall haunt your dreams and have ghost I'm sex with you. you. That's that's a great way to end a, a call with somebody. I'm gonna have just tell them you're gonna have ghost sex with them, then hang up. That's like I might go to jail for some weird attempted uh, molesting of uh, callers. I I hope nothing happens to you, caller. Sorry. If a ghost comes to you tonight, tell him Fran Drescher sent sent you. Or something. I don't know. I've got to thank some people. The P.O. box was empty this week. I was amazed. There was no wrong mail. There was no right mail either. Uh, 90549 Brooklyn, New York, 11209. Um, you could also donate by clicking Twitch if you have Amazon and subscribe in there. If you don't have Amazon, you could still subscribe there if, if you're really into that or something. Uh, there's I'm on I, I I sell some crap on Redbubble. Actually, Redbubble makes it, and they just slap some art that I made on there. Uh, uh, mostly album covers and stuff. There's also NickTheRat.com or NickTheRatRadio.com. Donate. You can go there and use PayPal. Send me money. I read uh, donation amounts. Uh, initials, and for some people, I read uh, other names because I remember them now. Let's see if I could do this. Man, you know, like wine and beer to let you read easier. Oh, it's midnight in the sewer. A little past midnight in the sewer. It's 12.06 in the sewer. This is, uh, let me get out of this camera angle for a second here. I thank people. Hi, people. And we're going to thank some people. Let me do a search here for PayPal. And this is usually how it works. All right, let's see. We have GS. I read initials. The no First, I'll read the note. Then I'll read the amount. And then I'll read the initials. There was no note. It was ten dollars, and it was from GS. Thank you, GS, for the ten. I shall use that to buy another box of wine right after the show. Let's see here. Um, we have a four twenty. This is a monthly subscription. Usually, four dollars and twenty cents. I think is a a fair amount for the quality of uh, molestation you get in your ears every week. Uh, we got NW with that 420. NW, thank you so much. You've been around for a while, and I would like to high-five you. Psh. That was very PewDiePie of me. Ugh. <laughs> uh, we have Tajanta with 420. No note. Thank you. Tujanta. I think I'm saying it right. You didn't put a a pr pronunciation key. Am I saying it right there, Chad Quirkus? Can I say it backwards? Uh, at Nujti. Or is it uh, at 
had nudged. Whatever. I don't know. Um, thank you. Oh, uh, wait. I think we have some more donations, perhaps. We have 420 from JB. Thank you so much, JB. And we have a gas blast. You could also email me uh, at nickandnicktherat.com and put gas blast in the title, and I will read it one day on the show live. And I don't uh, don't give any initials or uh, names or anything there. I don't I don't like to dox people. Also, all of my servers are secure with Google in Amazon's cloud in China. So uh, we got an email here, Gas Blast. We have a it says Nick, it's happening, and it's a link to. It's actually not a link. It's just an image of an Instagram. User, I think this is Instagram. I hate Instagram so much. And uh, it's a it's a picture of a Instagram picture of a link to a news article. Breaking news: One million pounds of rat meat being sold in America. A million pounds of rat meat being sold as boneless chicken wings in the U.S. Is this real? I think 2022 is when Soylent Green does happen. It's very weird how people pick and choose what they eat. What's the difference between a rat and a squirrel? Well, I guess the difference is that rats crawl around in the muck in the mile, but so do pigs. Muck in the muck in the guile, muck in the muck in the something. Let's listen to some more music. We'll be back. We're going to talk to you more about paranormal sex toys. There's a whole bunch more. I think there's even some Zindu, too. Did Zindu send anything? Why are you holding up that glass jar filled with white fluid? It says Zindu on it. That's weird. Um, let's listen to... We have a song by a, an artist named Archon. Now, the title of this song, I don't know what the fuck it is. It looked like some Korean lead speak to me.
And this is Zindu coming to you for the Dark Sewer News Network. I hope you're having a lovely evening tonight. Um, I was too until I read this fucking article about these uh, tardigrades being quantum entangled. It sounded like some bullshit headline. I didn't read it the first day it came out. I waited. I let it that I let it sit and, and uh, stew a little bit because I I didn't want to I didn't want to rip off uh, thirty of my dicks of my hundred and ninety dicks. So I I waited. I waited. You know. Let me let me see if I see any more headlines about this tardigrade shit because because if a scientist actually entangled a tardigrade in a quantum entanglement thing, I'd, I'd like to read about it. But you know, I waited, and then uh, Cosmos came out with a uh, article, and uh, I'm just, I actually just want to read almost the whole fucking article to you because uh, because it sounded like a whole bunch of bullshit, and it looks like they they kind of break it down to what happened. So I'm just gonna read this whole thing to you and uh, let you decide about whatever they're fucking talking about here. In a pre-peer-reviewed paper recently released on RxVIX, I don't even know what the fuck that is, a team of physicists claimed to have done something extraordinary, placing a tardigrade in a state of quantum entanglement with a pair of qubits. Ooh, this sounds nice. According to the mind-bending weirdness of quantum physics, quantum entanglement means that two things of the system cannot be described separately. So if it happens to A, it instantaneously happens to B, which, eh, whatever. Anyway, very simplistically, this means that anything that happens to the tardigrade also happens to the qubits, vice versa. Previously, this has only been done with particle-sized objects, so if true, this would be the first time an animal has ever been quantum entangled. Well, I guess they never met me with that, uh... Those Dutch prostitutes. Anyway, uh, the paper triggered an avalanche of media reporting, tweets, and online coverage. Tardigrade meets Quantum World is an exciting headline after all. Yeah, it's so fucking exciting. I knew it was bullshit. Anyway, but there's one problem. Other physicists are not convinced by the claims. I can't believe they're not, they're, they're not just bending over it and accepting all science for being completely true. How could they do this? How could these other physicists actually have other fucking opinions. It, it, the, in science, there are no opinions. There, there's only... Anyway, let me get back to the story here. The authors did not entangle a tardigrade with a qubit in any meaningful sense, writes Rice University physicist professor Douglas Nadelson. What a fucking hater. This is not quantum biology. Uh, others echo the view that the tardigrade did not achieve true quantum entanglement, with some saying that instead the researchers only showed classical interactions between tardigrade and the qubit. Qubit is an electrical circuit, and putting the tardigrade next to it affects it, uh, affects it through the laws of electromagnet blah, 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 electromagnetism, which we've known about for more than 150 years. All right, let me just tell you what the experiment was. They, they took this little tardigrade. They, I could go through the whole thing, but I'm just going to go over what I know. They, they, they took a little tardigrade. They froze it. It was still alive because you could freeze and dethaw tardigrades. Apparently, they could live for fucking years frozen. <sighs> I guess they're going to be the new rulers of the planet one day. Anyway, they froze it and they stuck it between these two things and then they put electricity through it and the electricity went through the tardigrade. So they're... they're oh, boy. Yeah, so they're saying that that was a... Uh, they're saying that was... that That's him being entangled because he was completing a circuit. I doubt, I doubt it was instantaneous, but it must have seemed instantaneous because these things are so microscopic and tiny. Um, whatever, whatever. You know what? I can't fucking read this shit no more. You get the point, everybody. Uh, headlines are uh, bullshit just to get you to fucking get your nipples moist. Start a story up around the fucking cooler at work so you can seem cool. Like, hey, Joe, you're the entangled quantum uh, a tardigrade. <laughs> and then uh, somebody from CBS uh, fucking Peacock Network sues because they're like, oh, we used that in our show with fucking, fucking Jesus in space. Space Jesus. Either way. Uh, look here, everybody. Don't believe the hype. Just believe in the Dark Sewer News Network. You know, I usually do two articles. Well, let me see if I have anything else here. Blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Cows stuck in door for winter. They're putting fucking VR helmets on the cows. It's fucking stupid. Let's see. Runner highs. Uh, runner high maybe result from molecules called uh, cannabinoids. The body's own version of THC and CBD. Oh, that's great. So you start running around, you get high. They keep trying to promote running to people by saying that you're going to get fucking stoned off your ass for free if you run. It's, it's bullshit. Your legs and your knees are just going to hurt. Your legs are going to hurt. 
usually when I run, about 50 of my 300 dicks get fucking... They, they knock together. Very uncomfortable the next day. I kid, it's... I get a lot of rashes and stuff. Anyway, this is Zindu. I'll be back later with uh, maybe more news. I don't, you know, there's no news. I'll come back. I'll, I'll, I'll read you guys a poem or some shit. All right. Fuck this. Bye. Ah. Uh, let's see if there's somebody on the... Uh, live long and poop. I was thinking about Star Trek earlier. Like, I like Star Trek a lot more than Star Wars. Both have their issues now, or whatever, but there, there's some good parts to everything. There's also bad parts to everything as well. Uh, but but more or less, I, I think... Uh, I was going to say Trek is the thinking man Star Wars. Those times are over. Star Wars, Star Wars also had some pretty good plot lines, I've, I've heard... Like the the Clone Wars cartoon or some shit was supposed to be really good. And now I forgot what I was gonna totally say about those two franchises. But yeah, the phone lines are open. Let's see if anybody has called in. Nine one seven seven one nine five nine two three. Yo, Nick the Rick, my guy. What is going on? Um, I saw you liked my track on SoundCloud, Different Struggle. Whoa, you're hacking my phone squirrel. line now. No, I'm joking. I'm checking out uh, time. This oh. is the new voicemail. Hey, hey if you're like, man, you suck too. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa, okay, let's listen to uh, one more voicemail here. Uh, Uh, we are calling to tell you that uh, your author of a uh, paranormal dildo is on hold uh, due to shipping problems uh, currently that we are experiencing. Uh, we should have paranormal dildo uh, back in stock very soon. Uh, we want to apologize, say sorry for inconvenience. You should have paranormal dildo very soon. Uh, as a thank you for your business, we are including the uh, haunted butt plug with the author uh, as a way of saying thanks for your business and thank you for ordering Paranormal Del Del. Oh, wow. D Ducky uh, resubbed for 32 months of Beso Bucks. Damn. Well, thank you. That's a lot of bases, Bucks, buddy. Ducky? Buddy Ducky? Are you troubled by strange noises in the middle of the night? Do you experience feelings of dread in your basement or attic? Have you or any of your family seen a spook, specter, or ghost? If the answer is yes, don't wait another minute. Pick up your phone and call professional Nick the Rat. Our courteous and efficient staff are on call 24 hours a day to serve all of your supernatural elimination needs. I'm ready to believe you. Call now, 917-719-5923. <laughs> Everybody trying to find the best present you can for your loved ones out there and you're sick of all the boring, lame shit that you get? Yeah, I am too. I used to buy people loot boxes and those crates and like uh, the boxes with the food in it. Those are all lame. Those are all like, you know, 2018 type shit. This is 2020, people. Let's up our game. And we are offering people the best new type of box that you could ship to you loved ones and to yourself it's it's not meant for just one group of people it's meant for everybody this this is a new revolution we're trying to host here the uh it's it is called 
dildo by the pound. This is um, a new loot box. Every month, you get a pound of different types of dildos sent to your house. Some vibrate, some are circular shaped, some are uh, self-lubing. It, you'll never know what you're going to get. You just pay one low payment of $69.99 a month, and each month, you could send a pound of dildos to anybody you want. Just think about that. Dildo by the pound. It's going to be a big hit in all, like your family. You could share it with your parents, uh, your brother, your sister. I've I've seen I've seen a lot of videos on the internet, and it seems like there's a lot of brothers and sisters doing strange stuff out there. So make sure you get your loved ones pound of dildos in dildos by the pound. Think about it. It's a dick in the box that you could give to your loved ones. Order today at 917-719-5923. That is, that is Dildo by the Pound, only from the Dark Sewer Shopping Channel. DJ Adolaviera Drugs Sex Rewind. These bitches break my nerve. Just trying to rack that curve. I'm chilling, getting blind. Drug six and rewind. Drug six and rewind. Drug six and rewind. Drug six and rewind. I'm chilling, getting blind. Drug six and rewind. And I'm eating on the floor. Show you what I got in store. Cause I'm chilling, getting blind. Drug six and rewind. And drug six and rewind. And rewind. And I'm chilling, getting blind. Drug sex and rewind it. I'm eating on the floor. Show you what I got in store. Cause I'm chilling, getting blind. Drug sex and rewind it. Drug sex and rewind it. Rewind it. These bitches break my nerve. Just trying to rack that curve. I'm chilling, getting blind. Drug sex and rewind. Drug sex and rewind. Drug sex and rewind. Drug sex and rewind. They're doing well. They're, they're doing good in my book. Good morning to uh, the man in the sewer, Nick the Rat. Drug sex and rewind. These bitches break my nerve. Just trying to rack that curve. I'm chilling, getting blind. Drug sex and rewind. Drug sex and rewind. Drug sex and rewind. Drug sex and rewind. These bitches break my nerve. Just trying to rack that curve. I'm chilling, getting blind. Drug sex and rewind. Drug sex and rewind. Drug sex and rewind. Drug sex and rewind. Okay. In the morning to you, sir. Nick the Rat. I just gotta let you know right now, man, you're doing great stuff. And I fucking love you, man, your show rocks. Nick the Rat! Six and rewind. <laughs> <laughs> 
man in the sewer Nick In the morning to you, <clears throat> let us, with tomatoes and bacon, it's a BLT, you can really save your ass sometimes by changing the meeting, the, the meaning, the meetings, uh, the, the meaning of the meetings. Words, information is very fluid. You can't stop that. Uh, we sh we uh, we should probably talk about another paranormal sex toy here. From the book Parasexual by Dr. Richard Johnson, who studied at Moorhead State University. Um, this next item is pretty. It's pretty cool. <clears throat> I was looking on eBay if I I could buy one, but they're they're very impossible to get. the The next item we're going to talk about. Okay, if you if you have anything with uh, monster mutilation, please. If that's your trigger, if if you're triggered by uh, monster mutilation, if you never had one of those toys where, um, uh, like the the it's like the engraving kit where you could change the plate and you could put like, uh, you take pieces off. Some, well, sometimes people take pieces off of, uh, this was the siren's throat box. <sighs> this reminds me of the, the voice box we were just talking about. Maybe this is why, uh, boxes were on my mind. I don't know. But either way, let's, let's read what the good doctor wrote about this here. Uh, sirens were dangerous creatures who lured nearby sailors with their uh, enchanting music and singing voices to shipwrecks on the rocky coast of their islands. It is also said... Hold on, I need, I need some more wine here. Let me move this here. Microphone. Maybe I can just lean back a little bit, get a little comfortable while I'm reading this. Jeez. <clears throat> Here we go. Uh, um. It is also said that they can even charm the winds. <clears throat> uh, Roman poets would form groups to hunt down the sirens, not to protect the ships, but to claim the magical throat for themselves. This became a big issue in 70 B.C., where most of the Roman men would leave their wives to go seeking the magical item. One Roman poet told a tale about how his hunting crew were slain by a rabid siren, leaving only her throat for himself. Other poets told tales of giant parties where all the Roman poets would take part in the siren's gullet. The vibrations and magic within were coveted. This is why the sirens went extinct. A Roman poet made an engraving which turned out to be a recording of what the siren's throat sounded like. People, we have a recording of the siren's throat box. This is like the, uh, the sound wave. Somebody must have been like in the BCs because I think they went in, uh, extinct at like before Christ was born. Definitely, definitely before Christ was born, the sirens were extinct. I don't think they got on the, uh, I don't think they got on the ark, if you know what I'm trying to say. 
I think the, I think the sirens all drowned or something. Uh, I, they were all killed for their throat boxes. We, he sent us a recording. We have it. The royal we. Because I think Diane has it. Because she's going to sell it for a lot of money after the show and leave the sewer forever. Sorry, Diane. Um, we have a recording of this. We're going to play it for you. All right. Now, if you're against animal cruelty, you might want to turn this off. And this is kind of like wearing leather or something. If, if you want to compare... If you want to compare what you're about to hear to uh, wearing clothes, like a physical thing, it would be like it would be like if you were um, putting on leather and you didn't want to. This is if you're in, if you if you don't like slaying of mythical magical creatures, turn it off now. All right, let's let's hear this thing. Here we go. Um, you gotta load up the tape. Load up. Yeah, mellow. Here, here we go. Let's listen to Rid Kid with Different Struggle. Well, thanks for the voicemail too, by the way. Yeah. Listen up, yeah. Yeah. I'm screaming man down. Put some stuff up on the pad now. But all I can muster is a sad frown. I've always had doubt. Like I'm running through a bad route. I just hope that I don't stand out. Some people want a sack clout. I'd rather black out. Drink it excessively. This is a mess. It's been testing me. I confess I'm a wreck mentally, but dedicated heavily. Medicated, definitely. I'ma set the scene. That mental trick to me. And there's nothing left to see. Uh, the rest ain't up to me. It's not my cup of tea. I use my lungs to breathe and smoke a bunch of weed. I had crumbs to eat. Like once a week, but they had the funds for me. I just wasn't living comfortably. I don't want to bleed. I'm scared of pain. I need a cup to drink. It's a different struggle. I had to shift the rubble. Yeah. I sense it. Ah, fuck it. I wanna stop the feeling like a moxicillin I miss my Honda Civic with the pot still in it I was whipping around the block but the cops was hitting Yeah, I miss my friends from the old times Think about them in the cold nights Precious like a gold mine Yes, it lets my soul shine Never told lies Just think if it was your life Yeah It's a different struggle I had to shift the rubble Yeah I sense a bit of trouble So I did was put in a little hustle Yeah it's a different struggle, I had to shift the rubble, yeah I sense a bit of trouble, so I did was put in a little hustle, yeah I need something new, like what a view, it was such sudden news But I had to muddle through, my uncle, the whole fam and my cousins too I'm running to another queue, yeah I ain't waiting here, had to say it clear Now I crack a smile, but I can't shake the fear no track in a while, so I'll make the year. Mad stress on a pile, man, I hate it here. That's how I feel, right? It ain't real bright. I'm just trying to get a meal tonight. But it's not so bad, I've come to realize. That's why I keep it sealed tight. Then I let it burst. This ain't the first, it ain't the last, it ain't the worst. Look who you ask, it ain't a curse. It's who I am, this ain't a verse, it's the truth. It's how I execute my plan, yeah. Trying to lose focus on the negatives. I was too hopeless, but now I'm on the mend. I got new doja, now I'm a different man. I'm a true soldier, cause this war will never end. So I shout, but I'm on the other side now. Had to find out how to live on nine clouds and take some time out. You know what I'm about. I've come a long way, man, I'm proud. Years later, I'm still rapping. I'm glad that it happened. Now I'm taking flight. He felt his facet. He felt the passion. He felt the madness. Listen to the heat, melt the dabs, and I'm cool. 
don't freak out I have it I'll speak till I'm raspy I see that you angry If you got something you need You can ask me Now I'ma go peace out I am free It's a different struggle I had to shift the rubble Yeah I sense a bit of trouble So I did was put in a little hustle Yeah It's a different struggle I had to shift the rubble Yeah I sense a bit of trouble, so I did was put in a little hustle, yeah. What? Quarkus just brought up something in the chat there. The Palladians. Now, the, the Palladians, were they... What are Anglo-Saxons? Were the Palladians the Anglo-Saxons? That was a very good track. That's uh, it was it was a good song. It was a it was a well laid out rhyme beat. I liked the story. It didn't repeat itself so much. the The mastering was pretty good. Maybe a little bit more bass. But yeah, it was good. Um, so what? what? When I when I hear the Anglo Saxon, I think I think of like cold cuts or something at the deli. I don't, I don't, I don't know why. lost his greedy mind, poor chap. I want you to take over for his foreign client, this uh, rather eccentric Count Dracula. He's buying up property around London. Of course, sir. I'll attend to the Count. Thank you for your confidence. This is a great opportunity for you, Harker. But you'll have to leave uh, Transylvania immediately. Opportunities such as this come but once in a lifetime. Yes, of course, sir. If I may inquire, what in fact happened to Mr. Renfield in Transylvania? Nothing. Nothing. Personal problems. Close these transactions, and your future with this firm is assured. Now, you've emphasized that these imprints that are so important on our lives are, in some sense, out of our control. It's just whatever, either through fate or accident, happens to us during our imprint vulnerability permanently shapes our consciousness or maybe not so permanently, because um, according to Leary's ideas here, these imprints can be changed. Yes, that's Leary's major psychiatric, psychological heresy. Leary believed LSD could change imprints, and one of his first major experiments was to take a group of convicts in the Massachusetts prison system who were due for release, take them on mystical trips with classical music, readings from the Hindu and Buddhist scriptures and LSD, and reprogram them into a state of mind where they didn't feel like criminals anymore. A lot of them cried. They wanted to lead happier and less destructive lives. And there was a follow-up study a year after they were released. A year after release, something like 85% of all criminals are back in jail for a new crime. In Leary's case, something like 80% of them were still with leading productive and non-criminal lives. Another uh, an associate in that did a follow-up study in the 70s, and all the ones he could find were still out on the streets, not back in prison. Leary had reversed the recidivism rate. There should have been a lot more research on that, and we wouldn't be building so goddamn many prisons now, would we? But again, the government shut down the research. They wanted to keep mind manipulation a secret that the CIA could use for their own purposes and nobody else would know anything about. So the implication is he had somehow re-imprinted them to be nicer. He re-imprinted them to see that their life script, their, their, their basic programs on the first four circuits, 
were uh, leading them to a, a, a life that would remain basically unhappy. If you go on committing crimes, you're going to spend most of your life in prison, which is not a nice place to spend most of your life. You're also going to spend your time outside looking over your shoulder all the time to see if the cops are coming yet. It's not a happy lifestyle. Leary's psychology is based entirely on the principles of hedonic philosophy. What do you want out of life? To have a good time. Okay, get rid of all the programs that make you miserable. And if one of your programs is holding up liquor stores, you're going to have to get rid of that one because that gets you in prison pretty frequently. <laughs> so have other people been able to reproduce his findings? Only to a limited extent because uh, once the good reports were coming in, not only from Leary but from, uh, oh, at least a hundred other investigative teams were reporting great results with LSD, the government shut down all the research. All the research that has been done since then has been in illegal and therefore not published. But there is research going on. It's like the Inquisition, as I said. There are people, scientists, doing research and communicating with one another, but they just don't publish, so they don't bring the government down on their heads. So Leary had found that you could re-imprint through using psychedelic drugs. Have people found other ways uh, to re-imprint people? Well, Stanislas Graf, whose work I haven't studied closely enough to have an informed opinion, he believes that through breathing exercises and loud music he can produce re-imprinting experiences. He doesn't use the word re-imprinting, but what does he call it? Spiritual transformation. But what he means is the same as what Leary means by re-imprinting. Stanislaus Graf prefers more religious terminology. Leary prefers more ethological terminology. Mm -hmm. It's a difference in style. And are there other techniques? Well, if you take uh, classic yoga like Patanjali to it, his system is you start with asana, which is holding one posture as long as you can and doing it every day for longer and longer periods. Eventually, you get over the fidgets, the boredom, and all the general nuisance of it, and you find yourself in a very peaceful place. This seems to be the unimprinted first circuit before you've imprinted either the infophobia or infophilia. The next step is pranayama, which quiets all the emotional compulsions on the emotional territorial circuit. And the third step is dharana, which is concentrating on one image and driving all words out of your head. That seems to be the hardest step for most people, so very few people follow that. Instead of dharana, there's mantra. Instead of trying to concentrate on a red triangle, which tends to turn orange after a while or, or go off screen entirely, you take a phrase and just keep repeating it. I learned one from some wandering uh, shaman I met once. Shamadi shawadi, shamadi shawadi, shamadi 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 shawadi, shamadi shawadi, shamadi shawadi, shamadi 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 shawadi. It's almost like a windshield wiper. It really cleans the mind. It closes down the third circuit. So you've closed down the first circuit with asana, the second circuit with pranayama, and the third circuit with dharana or mantra. And then you close down the fourth circuit by taking a vow of celibacy. And then you got a body full of energy and nowhere to go, so you explode upward into one of the higher circuits. At least that's my analysis of how yoga operates. Those who don't want to take a vow of celibacy can study the art of Tantra, which takes the sexual energy and instead of blocking it entirely, formalizes and ritualizes it into a higher circuit experience. What does your shirt say? Uh, make stalking illegal again. The gang stalking? Gang, it's like, I don't know, it's something I'm kind of passionate about. There's a lot of people online that document them getting like followed and shit. Like gang stalked. And it's pretty fucked that like, there's no legislation to back it up. So light is a very limited happening. The whole cosmos is a dark art. No? So, there is a lot of dark art that one can practice, not necessarily life negative. Every guru is an occultist, okay? Right now I initiate you into Shambhavi, it's an occult. Otherwise, how would it work? Occult means a certain capability, it's a certain technology. Right now I can pull out my cell phone and speak to somebody in another part of the world. This is a technology. Suppose without the cell phone, Right now if I speak to somebody in United States just like this, this is occult. So technology is not very different from occult. 
you are using different kinds of material, but it's actually the same thing. When modern technology was not there, occult was extremely relevant. But today, occult's relevance is receding as modern technology progresses. Redefine the word tantra because it's been distorted by people. First, let's understand this. The word tantra means a technique or a technology. But because the tantra that you're hearing of is a rebound from the American coast, you think tantra means unbridled promiscuity. No, tantra means extreme discipline. It's not <laughs> unbridled promiscuity, it's extreme discipline. Learning to use your body and your mind like you would use some other outside instrument. Like how you would use your computer or a screwdriver, like that you learn to use your body and your mind, it takes enormous discipline, not promiscuity, not looseness. Tantra is not things, the books they have written largely by Western authors, all kinds of things, no. Tantric texts are of extreme discipline, not of any kind of looseness. Because they're talking about the body, and right now the modern societies, if you say body, they are fixated about repro reproductive organs in the body and nothing else about the body. So if you say body, they're only thinking of a few body parts. They forgot the brain. Because they're only thinking of few body parts, they're thinking about sexuality and nothing beyond that. It is about learning to use the body like a phenomenal mechanism. And it is. If you do not know how to use it, what will you do here? If you do not know how to use your physical self and the energy behind it, what will you do? You will have no impact on anything. So this is Tantra. I saw this TikTok the other day of this girl saying her life sucks because she lives in the middle of nowhere and has never gotten lucky or found any overnight success because she refuses to sell her soul. So let's talk about people who do this. Does this result in a loyal fan base and long-lasting success, or does it just give you five seconds of infamy? Things around this great country, maybe in Vegas, it's kind of like Cirque du Soleil, but more like Jerk du Soleil, because <laughs> that's what they're going to do to each other. They walk in this guy's office, and the agent goes, well, what do you people do? And they, the father's like, watch us. The father's like ripping off his kid's clothes, and he takes his wife's bra, and he throws it off of her, and he rips off her underwear, and he takes some of her pubes with it, it's horrible, and there's a little bit of blood starts dripping down her leg, and, it, and, and they're all like, uh, this, like, women and children are walking up here right now. <laughs> so the father's like totally undressing his whole family, and then, and then he gets out an epilady, and he starts shaving his wife's back. His daughter's got like a little, uh, you know, she's having her, she's having her friend, you know, she's having her period, which she's having, so he just pulls out the tampon, and throws it at the window, and it sticks. And then they all just start fucking each other. They, they go down on each other in all different configurations, it's, it's, it's 69, it's 29, because the kids are young, it's nine. The father bends his kid over on the guy's desk and he's like taking him from behind. All of a sudden the kid can't take it, diarrhea starts squirting out of his ass and it won't stop. It's like a hemorrhaging shit ass. The kid starts spinning in a circle because he can't control it. It's kind of like Curly in the Stooges, Mo Larry the Cheese, he's spinning in a circle. The projectile shit is just flying at him, it's going all over the room, it's like spin art. The room has got feces just dripping down, this poor kid is convulsing, he starts throwing up. You don't know whether to shit or puke in this room. That's how, <laughs> what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> Then, wait, there's more. The mother clips all the nails off of one of her hands, puts it up her daughter, and starts working her like a puppet. She's spinning her on the hand, and while this is going on, it's da 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 and they're skating in it, of course, and they're slipping, and with skating in your own feces and vomit and stuff, there's always going to be pratfalls, because, you know, you can't help it, it's slapstick. So they're slipping in it, and they're covered in it, and their faces are covered in it. Then they all start singing We Are Family by Sister Sledge, which I think is offensive, because you don't want to mix incest with feces and racism. I think it's wrong, and they shouldn't have done it. That's how I look at it. But you know what? An opening act's an opening act. So they continue. Father can't help himself. Hauls back, smacks his wife right in the mouth, knocks all of her teeth out. Sticks his fist, accidentally mind you, down her toothless throat. Unbelievable, he actually fists her neck. <laughs> Trying to get her off of his hand, he starts flailing around, he's a very strong man. Her body is flailing around, knocks all the kids against the wall, their heads hit the wall and they crack. Might have been They're a siren. They're fine, don't even worry about them. Their fall was broken by all the feces that was in their hair. So then they start singing, make them laugh. <laughs> they start singing, make them laugh and be a clown. <laughs> And uh, the father's hemorrhoid pops, right? So he grabs it up, puts it on the end of his nose like a clown, like Emmett Kelly, except he's covered in shit. Then they all start making out. <laughs>
you know, they're, they're making, <laughs> all kidding aside, the adrenaline, all the feces all over the wall, there's shit, there's vomit, and they've been running around, you get all heated, the kids are not bleeding bad, they get up there walking around kind of aimlessly, all six members of the family, and they just start making out very deeply with each other, like that old lady in a racer head with that guy, and then of course they all start vomiting because it's offensive to be kissing your family. By the way, this would be a good time right now to take your pants off and get some lotion, because that's what happens next with this family, they just start jacking and... <laughs> Uh, can I get a tape of this for my reel? I want to show this to my dad. I gotta finish the joke. They're all having sex with each other. And to me, if you're gonna have sex, by the way, with like a 14-year-old kid, you should be doing it in a prison. So you're right there. It's like one-stop shopping. So that's where this joke should have taken place, in a prison. And then they should have all been, the whole family should have been put to death immediately. But nope, nope, they're making out and having sex. And they all take each other from behind, which is impossible because if you have a big train, everybody's doing it to each other. The person at the end is pissed. So what happens next? Let's see. They've had a lot of sex. The room's covered in, in feces. The mother had a big boil on her back. That popped. Tampon finally by the end just kind of falls off the window. It was hanging there the whole time. The music gets more carny like boop, 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 boop. And they all start doing like a three ring circus with each other's tits. <laughs> They're so gone right now. Oh, I'll tell you what happens right now. Father takes out some amyl nitrates and he pops them. Like in the professional, you know, Gary Olden. And he just, oh, he goes like that. And then he just starts fucking going nuts. He does like Fred Astaire did. He goes dancing up the wall. And then he just starts kicking everybody right in the dicks. He kicks his kids in the dicks. He kicks his wife in the dick. I didn't fully tell you the whole story. The whole family has dicks. The entire family, kind of like Hermie family. And I haven't mentioned piss yet. There is piss everywhere. Because by the way, if you're gonna shit and have all these involuntary fluids come at you, there's gotta be piss. I just wanted to go on record saying that there's piss in the room as well. Because I think piss, by the way, it's kind of like if you're watching Food Network, <laughs> they're gonna show this on other planets. <laughs> All right, the father's, he popped the name of nitrate. He's got smelling salts that he's been giving to his kids because they, they keep passing out, you know? <laughs> the fact that their heads are bleeding and they've been anally raped in front of a, an agent yet. The room is just covered in piss and blood and hemorrhoids stuck to the father's nose and they all go, ta-da! And the agent just looks at them and, uh, and he says, well, that's, uh, that's, I've never seen anything like that before. And they, he goes, what do you, what do you uh, people call yourselves? And uh, the father says, the, uh, this is hard to do. It's hard to do the end of the joke. Because what he should have said is, the mouth-fisting, dirty, sick, hemorrhoid-infested, bloody vomit, shit, diarrhea-covered, pedophilic piece of shit, aristocrat family. But that is just dirt. And it's not funny. I ain't laughing. So I would say, um, you have to say the punchline, don't you? The whole family. They, they do this whole, you know, make them laugh, make them laugh. And they do a whole uh, cute little, ta-da! Except two of the kids, they're half dead because they just had the shit kicked out of them. They're covered in, in feces. It's fucking horrible. And then they're like, and the father goes, what do you think? And the agent goes, wow. And he just kind of wipes a little bit of shit away from his eyes and kind of takes off a little bit of the blood that's on him. And he goes, what do you guys call yourselves? And the little kid, in his dying breath, the little kid that his father uh, kicked him in the head. <laughs> Let me do it differently. Hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Ta-da! And the agent goes, wow, that's, a, that's some act. What do you people call yourselves? And the father takes his fist out of his wife's mouth. It's been in there the whole time. He's like, and there's like a, a suction -y sound. And she's just got no teeth. And she's covered in, in diarrhea. <laughs> And she mouths the words, and then she dies. <laughs> dies, just flat out dies. And the agent's like this. Residents refusing a COVID-19 vaccine in Canada's Quebec province may soon have to pay a tax instead. Because sex is the most significant force in you. It is your life force. It is from this energy that you come. It is this energy that keeps you running, alive. Call it Elan Vital. Call it life force. Because the word sex has become so condemned by the priests that even to use it you feel as if you are doing something guilty. Use life force and you can see the difference. With the word life force you don't feel anything guilty. With sex immediately Something inside you starts pinching. That is your conscience. <laughs> the priest has managed to create a small mechanism in you. It starts pinching you that something is wrong. Sigmund Freud 
is a byproduct of the religions. If there had been no these none of these religions, there was no possibility of any psychoanalysis because what was there to analyze? First, one needs a repressed system. And then, a Sigmund Freud is needed, an Adler is needed, a Jung is needed, and they will go on coming. Till religions go on suppressing, more and more sophisticated methods of psychoanalysis and treatment will be coming. It is a growing profession. I'm so depressed, I don't know what I'm doing. I have not got a clue. Red Tim with Dance This House.
Hey everybody, uh, welcome welcome back to Nick the Rat Radio, uh, episode 300 plus. I'm going to check the uh, the uh, old gas blast box, see if there's any new updates here. Something about my car insurance. Hold on, hold on. Oh, I have to cancel another credit card now. The scientists are not going to be happy with that. Um, well, luckily, we'd have this deal with uh, Dr. Richard Johnson. Uh, he's a friend. For tax reasons. Uh, paranormal sex toys. Uh, parasexual. Big book. Um, I think it's like 634 pages in there or something. It's not, it's not an exact art. Uh, this next, this next um, excerpt from this gigantic book of deviant paranormal sexual toys, or some, they're not even all paranormal. They're, there's the... Uh, <laughs> the the, the, all right, let's just read this next one here. <laughs> I don't want, I don't want to put no more weights on the, uh, Pharaoh's testicle tugger. Um, I, I, I packed that away. I put it back into the box. We're going to send that off to, uh, Never Never Land. No, uh, the next one is Vampire Whispers. Yes, it's a, a sexual ASMR. From vampires. It could hypnotize you to jizz your pants and also to become a complete uh, cult member to the vampire community. There's at least 200 pages uh, about this one thing, but we're going to read one part of it. And see what we got here. This is a this was a very good couple chapters. And uh, we're going to break down to like a paragraph here for you. Uh, so the ex the ex the excerpt the excerpt says vampires have access to many dark arts. In the eighties, they had access to cassette tapes. Uh, they would record themselves saying a spell, and leave the cassette tape in goth clubs all over the planet. People used to think that during the 80s, the young gothic people of the world were being abducted by duck-like aliens, but they were mistaken. What? What? They were actually being lured to Transylvania to a castle which housed many vampires, and they would dine on the hypnotized young individuals. You would think that vampires would have moved on to other tech by the 90s, but luckily... They found that they could get even younger blood by opening their own pizzerias. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Here's one of the... No, he sent a tape. He sent a tape. Uh, it's a tape left uh, at one of the goth clubs. And we're going to play it. But you might be like, Nick, the lawyers won't let you play this. They'll be hypnotized by the vampires. M my listen, sewer chat, the sewers will empty. And Transylvania will get fresh blood for the vampire. No. These tapes, they were redubbed by a moil, and they have lost all their power. Completely harmless. So let's pop this in, and uh, let's give a listen to it, and see what we got here.
constantly with the pink full moon and the howling wolves, you want to come here. Why, you ask? Well, because I am going to right on the tip of your and then I'm going to have at least 30 more cut you right on your tra-la-la. Yes, don't you want to come here and have the tips of all of your in your balls in your t Oh, don't you want to have them all just rubbed and touched by us vampires? You, you will drop everything you're doing and come here now. Uh, I got this sudden urge to go to Transylvania. Um, before I go, um, let's listen to, what is this, Tarmim with I'm Your Puppet. I want to go to Transylvania. Who wants to go, who wants to, go? let's have a meetup. Let's have a sewer chat meetup in Transylvania. I know this giant castle. For all this string and I'm Hi. Hello? The rack, how you been? Whoa. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> Did you ever have like a brain fart where reality just stops but then and then all of a sudden it kicks in and it hits you like a like a Mack truck? Yes. All have you ever wondered today. why Mac is the, the truck that you always get hit by? Is this how Apple's made so much money? That's funny. One of the few things I have never thought about why it's always a Mac truck. 
I will think about that for now on. <laughs> I was thinking about many other things early today, and I was a little uh, distracted because I started the show this uh, this evening, and I told an ex-girlfriend that she should tune into your show. She did. And then we got on the phone and we're talking for an hour and a half. <laughs> I hope she didn't hear that so, that Bob Saget joke played at two times speed. <laughs> no, I we did not hear the Bob Saget joke, but I'll tell you this. Of all the people that I know, um, how can I paraphrase this very nicely and easily succinctly i do not know anyone else outside the no agenda people that know what the fuck is going on this ex-girlfriend of mine that i hung out with a few years ago we didn't talk for about two and a half years we've been talking for uh several months now she she lived she was married to a jack she's Someone from the Bronx, and it's, um, I guess you can say of Italian descent, married a Japanese person, lived in Japan for a number of years. I like to eat at Europe, their house. Has traveled, has traveled most of the world, and we have almost the same. 99% of our knowledge matches up. She tells me a few things. I tell her a few things, but she has, she knows what the fuck is going on. And I, I don't know that anybody with anyone else I know in the Bronx, New York City, my male friends, particularly my female friends, but this ex-girlfriend of mine, she's got her shit together. She knows. Does she work for the government? On. She does not. She does not work for anybody. She's she's fucking she, as contractor. As I am contractor. <laughs> she might be spying on you, man. Oh, I wish. I would love her to spy on me. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some attention, probably please. not. But th that's not why I called tonight. I just brought that up because I missed about an hour and a half of your show because I told her to watch it and we started talking. That's cool. But is the topic still paranormal sex toys? Yes, it is. There's still a few more to to go through. Did you hear? Did you hear about any of them? I heard some of them. I have to. I apologize for not hearing all of them. Uh, that's that's fine. <laughs> there was like sixty things we we went, we went over. It was it was disgusting and filthy. Uh, oh, ap oh, awesome! I'm definitely gonna listen to the show again. But uh, here's my thing: Have you brought up? You say paranormal sex toy. My when you brought that up, you you uh, tooted that earlier on No Agenda Social. Uh, the first thing I thought of was astral traveling. Was that you, could do, you could do that. My first thought was that when you said paranormal sex toy is when I remember as a teenager, I attempted to do astral traveling. And I thought I saw one of my girlfriends did that come out correctly? One of my girlfriends? One of my girlfriends, and I thought I saw her on her bed in lingerie masturbating. So later that evening, I called her and I asked her, were you in this? Did you do that? And she said, yes. Yes. How did you know? Because you so, work for the government and you have the cameras. <laughs> so that was my first and only recollection that I ever thought that I know about about astral projection, astral viewing, and where talk about paranormal sex toys. That would I be saw, that's sort of like um like a VR helmet that is it's way better than a VR helmet. Absolutely, it was it was awesome, and I still remember it. And that was like well, I was a teenager then. I'm a few years older now. When somebody has remember. a paranormal experience, they never forget that shit. As as small as it could be, you're like, man, one time the radio changed channel on me out of the blue. There was a ghost in the house. He did it twice. He was then something licked my feet. What? <laughs> that, okay, that happened maybe twice, but I don't want to talk about that. Fucking hey, if that's true, 
That's never happened to me, unfortunately. That would be cool if that happened. No, what? I just do after protection and, 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 and I guess you could say spy on girlfriends when I was a teenager. So you, your your sex toy was like um, X-ray binoculars with yeah, infinite with binoculars. infinite projection. How wait, how close did you get though? <laughs> how close did you get? Like to the so quantum hard. qubit level, or was it like a meter away? Were you using European measurements or it inches? Was like, I was like three feet above her. And I could see what she was doing. She was laying in her bed <laughs> in a white negligee, white. Actually, uh, how can I? I don't know how to describe it any better, but uh, that was pretty good. Tight fitting. And she's laying there in her bed and she's having fun. And uh, it was a nice view. <laughs> and apparently I described it uh, accurately enough. And she wasn't creeped out about it. <laughs> You know that was back in the day. I've got, I've got so many silly questions, but they're probably not even worthwhile. At like, no. Well, uh, were you a physical? Were Were you able to interact? Did you like move anything around in the room? Because you could have like maybe found her wallet and got credit card number. That's or interesting because I <laughs> at the time did not think I was actually seeing her. I thought I was imagining what I wanted to imagine. So I didn't take it so seriously, but it started with going into a relaxed state, meditating, thinking about her, thinking about what she might do, doing a couple of minutes, not even a couple of minutes, only 30, 40 seconds, whatever. And then later on in the night, I called her up and I said, or maybe half an hour later or whatever. And I said, did this happen? And she said, yeah, how did you know? And that's what I remember from it. And it, it kind of freaked me out that I was able to actually do that. I'll admit, I has never it ever did happened it again? again. I, I've never tried it again because I felt like it was. <laughs> you could try it. That means you know how to do it, but you don't. Yeah, yeah. I I always thought it was kind of like why don't you should open privacy. a school? I I could probably have a. I get I get like some rooms in the sewer. We could start teaching people. So instead of like you know actually spying them i would just go like go to the houses and just you know <laughs> yeah well, no, you know just being stupid. well that's when the the physical becomes uh better than the the mental you were yeah. building well, the situation mentally and it became a physical thing almost instantaneously well, you're a quantum being in a oh, yeah. nano world You fucking make it. <laughs> okay, I had a few uh, fucking uh, Jack Daniel, Jenna Jacks, and uh, probably up in that twelve shot range by now. I'm still talking fairly straight, but uh, you say shit like that, and you fuck my brain up. <laughs> that's um, that's what happens when you, the paranormal gets involved. You never know what could happen. You gotta, you gotta wield gonna, your, you gotta wield your power for for um, for uh, the future. Of paranormal sex, you ever have somebody, somebody, you ever have sex with somebody, and you just like <laughs> can we can we include level? something into it as well to expand the horizon of possibilities? Um, I don't. Know, I've never had sex with something. What? Only had sex. Your hand it's is your hand more. a person? Um or is your hand a thing? <laughs> <laughs> Again, you're fucking screwing me up. After all this jack. Oh my god. I'm gonna have to call you back. I'm gonna have to get my shit straight. Oh my god. Okay. Calling you back fifteen minutes. I'm gonna get my shit straight. Anybody want to go to Transylvania? Um, we got 917-719-5923. I heard there's a castle 
constant howls and stuff. Oh, this is Seymour Skipper. Calling to tell you that your show is for grown no goodness. No one can come of it. You should be more like the few. The principal of the month. Uh, caller, next time you use your uh Daytona Beach mixer to make a phone call. <laughs> I was trying to think of a good kitchen KitchenAid mixer. Is KitchenAid a good brand? <laughs> Why would the how would the kit what well where's the button over here? There it is. Okay, uh, we got we got Zendu over here. We got Zindu part two, part two. Zin, Zindu. 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 Here we go. Woo. Hey everybody, this is Zindu. Welcome back. I'm going to read you some poetry because uh, I don't know what else there is to fucking do. Anyway, this one is by... Uh, Robert Frost. It's called The Road Not Taken. All right, this is uh, read by Zindu of the Dark Sewer News Network. Um, all right, let me go get on the, put on my sunglasses here and start snapping. Let me act like a fucking douchebag. No, I'm joking. Uh, let's see. Let's read this here. Uh, two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down on one of them as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth right next to four of my 500 dicks that they escaped. Then took the other that was just as fair and having perhaps the better claim. A couple rocks looked like titties. There was also grass and uh, it wanted wear. It wanted that wear down there. You know, like if there's a grass in the in the backyard, go running through the mud, trail it up through the front. Uh, though as for that passing there, had warned them really about the same. And I like to call that the sphincter in the road instead of the fork. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept that first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I would ever come back. I might come on some backs, but that's about it. I shall be telling this with a sigh, and a nod and a toke of this big old blunt that I stole from Nick's dresser draw. What? <laughs> I don't tell him. Uh, somewhere talking? ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood. And I, Zindu, I took the one less traveled. And that made me have the biggest dick in the world, motherfucker. Suck it. Yeah. No, okay. I, I, I changed some of the words around there. I hope uh, Robert Frost isn't mad. Um, let's see, is there any other, like, how can I just pull up a poem really quick? Let me see here. Poem of the day. Let's go to the poem of the day. This one's fucking short. Zindu. Like Nick, Nick, when he's laying down on his back, fully erect. This one, uh, this one's by Walt Whitman. Uh, when I heard and learned it did the astronomer. Ah, uh, man, this means good. Uh, when I heard the learned astronomer. Why can't I say that word? When I heard the learned astronomer. What the fuck is When the you proofs, the do? figures were arranged in columns before me. When I was shown the charts and diagrams to add, divide, and measure them. When I sit. When I sitting heard the astronomer where he lectured. That's the whole fucking poem. That's it. Oh, wait, no, there's more. There's more. I had to click. I had to click uh, subscribe now and put my credit card information in there. What? Luckily, I got the uh, dark sewer scientists card, and so I could just put their name here. Let me type this in here. Okay. Die, uh, die. Unlock rest of poem. Okay. Well, 
four dollars a word. This is gonna be expensive here. All right, yeah. Uh, unlock hold bone. All right. Uh, when I sitting heard the astronomer where he lectured with much applause in the lecture room, how soon unaccountable I became tired and sick and limp in the pants. Till rising and gliding out, I wandered off by myself, naked through the halls, looking for the bathroom. In the mystical, moist night air, because your mother's legs were spread wide open as she sat by the window, and from time to time, looked at it up in a perfect silence at the stars. There you go. That was uh, When I Heard the Learned Astronomer by Walt Whitman. I can tell why that motherfucker was famous. That was, that was, that, ah, that made my, my uh, lips smack. Anyway, this is Zindu, the beatnik poet for the Dark Sewer Poetry Network. I hope you all had a great week. And we'll be back next week. Well, I guess, I don't fucking know if my contract's up. Uh, Nick, is my contract up? Yes. But uh, just tell Diane that she could extend it like she extended many... All right, everybody. It's um one thirty in the morning in uh in Brooklyn, New York, right now, East Coast time. And. Uh, yeah, the show's coming to an end. We, I think there might be another voicemail or something. Let me check here. 917-709-5923. It just sounds weird when you talk about Moss. Jingling, goddamn, find a woman if you can. If you can't find a woman, find a clean old man. If you're ever in Gibraltar, find, find a flying bucket. Take a flying bucket, Walter. Do you do the double shuffle when your balls hang low? Do your balls hang low? Do they swing to and fro? Can you tie them in a knot? Can you tie them in a bow? Can you throw them over your shoulder like a continental shoulder? Do, you, do the shuffle buffle. When your balls hang low, do your balls hang low, do they swing to a bro? Can you tie him in a knot? Can you tie him in a bow? Can you do a lusty clamor when you hit him with a hammer? Do you do the double shuffle when your balls hang low? Thank you for that lovely rendition of how low my balls are hanging right now. They are hang. They are just hanging out there. We do have one more ex excerpt from um, the the book "Parasexual uh, Paranormal Sex Toys: The Encyclopedia Edition 2. I'm reading. This is edition two, second edition. Oh, there, this is the fourth edition. There was three other editions. Diane, you are really efficient with those cue cards. You have like seven cards and one of them with giant marker you wrote. The answer to my question. Okay, either way. Um, we do have one more. Excerpt from uh, excerpt. Excerpt. I've probably been saying this wrong the whole fucking episode. Uh, Dr. Richard uh, Johnson... And he uh, he studied at Moorhead State University. This last one is Bigfoot toenail shavings 
as an aphrodisiac. I don't know if I want to read this. I might puke. This book is disgusting. This is like, this is like that Bob Sackett joke from the, from the aristocrats. Actually, this is not that bad. But damn, Dr. Richard Johnson, you, you got to read this book, people. You should buy it. It's, um, I think it's like 20 bucks or something on Amazon somewhere. Yeah, I'll look it up. Uh, Bigfoot toenail shavings as aphrodisiac. Procreation was an important moral and religious religious issue, and aphrodisi aphrodisiacs Afro aphrodisiac. Why are they called an aphrodisiac? Like, what's an aphrod? Is that like Greek for uh, erection or something? Hey, I'm not gonna look it up now. You you, you look it up. And send me an email. I will read it. Uh, we're sought to ensure both male and female potency. Sexual dysfunction is an uh, inability to achieve a normal sexual intercourse, uh, including premature ejaculation, retrograded, retarded, or inhibited ejaculation. What's an inhibited? How do you have an inhibited ejaculation? What? I'm, I'm looking that up. I think I should understand what an inhibited ejaculation is. Is so that when, when you inhibit your your jack? Inhibited ejaculation. What does that mean? Let's see here. Uh, delayed ejaculation, sometimes called... How do you have a delayed... That's weird. Some dudes, they, they like go, ooh, and then like five minutes later, jizz in their pants. That is a problem. That would be a problem. That would be super fucking annoying. Uh, um, thank goodness there's a way to fix this, I guess. With Bigfoot <laughs> toenail shavings. Delayed ejaculations. Symptoms and causes. Mayo. Everything goes back to the Mayo Clinic. Well, hell, Mayo. Uh huh. Do do boo boo do boo can be a temporary or a lifelong problem. Uh, it's a problem. Yeah, it's a problem. Oh, uh, chronic health conditions, surgeries, and Medicaid treatment for delayed. Uh, they're not saying anything to specific symptoms. Why am I reading this right now? This is. I'm intrigued, but. All right, some men with delayed ejaculations need 30 minutes or more of sexual stimulation to have an orgasm and ejaculate. What? That's... I thought that was called uh, endurance. Endur endurance. Get your insurance with some endurance. So that's a good thing. Why is this a problem? Well, I guess, you know, if you, if you got to make uh, 50 kids in an hour... The person that could uh, get this done faster than 30 minutes is... Going to get their fill. Uh, but there's no specific time that indicates a diagnosis of... Diagnosis of delayed ejaculation. So there's a word for a thing that's only a problem if you make it one. When to see a doctor. All right, here we go. Delayed, wait a second. You're supposed to see your, your doctor if delayed ejaculation is an issue for, oh, you or your partner. I thought it just said your partner. But really, if it's not a problem for you, if you're like, hey, it takes me 30 minutes of uh, all this, I'm not going to a doctor. I don't know. Uh, you have another known health problem that might be linked to delayed ejaculation. What is a health problem linked to well, you have uh, other symptoms a lot of uh, Mayo. You know what? We're going to read the rest of this here thing. All right. Uh, inhibited. Inhibited. Ejaculation. Rectile dysfunction. Arousal difficulties. Uh, reduced libido. 
compulsive sexual behavior, orgasmic disorder, and failure of demusence. What is that word? I'm learning so much tonight. I mean, I read this book before, but... Sometimes when you read the notes that the author sends you to say on the show, uh, de detumescence, the process of subsiding from a state of tension, swelling, or especially sexual arousal. The process of subsiding from a state. How do you subside? You become less intense. So after you... After you bust a nut, this is why I need um, um, like Webster's Dictionary all the time around me. We got a. I didn't. I knew that kid was on TV, but I didn't know he wrote like the good book. Let's read the rest of this here. Bigfoot toenail shaving aphrodisiac. Um, the introduction of the first cryptozoological, the first cryptozoological approved remedy for impotence hit the market in the late 90s. Via the discovery of a forest in western Wisconsin that was full of Bigfoot toenail leavings. Oh, the, the plot thickens. Uh, a friend and fellow scientist, Dr. Theodore Watts, better known by the colleagues um, by his colleagues as Dr. Twats, made the discovery while hiking with his family. He accidentally set up camp upon a mound of the clippings, and what? And that's when the the power of the Bigfoot seeped into into uh, wait, hold on one second, seeped into Dr. Twats' body. He, he was later found on the side of the road covered in blood with a giant erection. His family mysteriously disappeared, but his findings made him a ton of money and made many impotent men double their shoe sizes. And I'm not talking about feet. This is a good book. This All I could say is thank you to Dr. Richard Johnson and... Um, I think this, uh, the parasexual paranormal sex toys it's it's a good book it's great on audible too I usually use audible in the shower I'm weird like that but you could get the book through there I'll check the email one more time but I think the show is coming to an end. I think we're, um, I think the show is unraveled and, um, uh, I made it through people. You didn't think I could do it. You were like a box of wine and beer. Nick the rat is not making it five hours. Three. Three-ish. Yeah, you know. I'm just trying to extend the time so I could hit uh, three hours. Would you like to extend time with me, caller? Nick, there's a ghost. He he came back. There's a ghost. Where? He is here in my bedroom. He is wearing a striped shirt and some overalls and. Uh, cute little top hat. This, this. And I was hoping you could talk me through this. This is weird. Why? Why is there the sexualization of ghosts these days? They're the Seems enslavement. The, the theme. What? Caller. Hi. 
am I am I still waiting for my health insurance? Mm. Health insurance is a scam. Is all insurance a scam? How much money? Uh, how many? How many sales people are there? And how do you pay the people? What do they get paid with? The people that sell insurance, do they use the money that you give them? To... They probably get kickbacks when you get sick. Really? Yeah. Is that like new shoes or a la like a lazy boy couch? Mm, kickbacks? Maybe it depends on how sick you get. Like if you get cancer, they get like a lazy boy and a new pair of shoes. And they keep, but if you that's the kickback. You just get that's the like flu, these. then you get like a box of cocoa puffs. I want the full kickback package. I want the shoes and the chair because sometimes you need the shoes for the friction for the kick kickback. All right. Well, here's what you do: keep them real sick, make them get vaccinated, feed them a bunch of sugar. Mm -hmm. Have you ever? Had, had, had salt. What, salt? What, yeah, what is better, salt or sugar? If you had to give up one or the other, wh who wins in a fight, salt or sugar? Shit. <laughs> Shit wins. <laughs> I think I think sugar wins. Yeah, I would have a hard time giving up sugar for sure, but. I feel like salt contains iodide, which is apparently a necessary ingredient. So would we die without salt? We'd die without <laughs> sugar, too, probably. Yes. We'd probably. We would, would you die faster from eating more salt or probably more salt or sugar? Like if you drank a cup of sugar oh. or a cup of sal <laughs> uh, salt, what would kill you faster? Oh. Oh, I don't know. If you'd, you could probably oh. do. Uh, you'd have to mix it with some water and hot dog buns or something. I think salt would. Kill I you think fat. salt would do it. Yeah. Well, there you go. If you ever want to kill yourself by by ingesting a, a <laughs> condiment that's necessary Die for life, by drinking salt water. I mean, just go like drown yourself in the ocean. That'd be kind of like the same thing, right? I guess so. Imagine there was an ocean with sugar. Everybody would be there with straws. Oh. <laughs> Everybody be up there with diabetes. <laughs> Everybody would have a big old bushy mustache. They'd quit floating. They'd just sink. So the, what was it, the Dead Sea has the salt? Or is that the uh -huh. Red Sea? No, the Dead Sea. Dead Sea salt. Uh -huh. Sounds like some bougie the, ingredient that you would buy at a the sweet sugar bougie seed. ingredient store. Dead sea salt. Natural sea salt does not contain iodine or silica. It just contains... Isn't silica salt? Or silica is sand. <laughs> silica is sand. Salt is a uh, NHC... Yeah, you know me or something. Yeah, there's a bunch of chemists up in the sewer. Isn't it weird that there hasn't been any new sciences in so long? Hmm. That'd be weird. Like the first time there was chemistry, the first time there was like biology or physics or one of one of these sciences or maths, it must have been really exciting. And I think they tried to do that with with quantum, but they went to a such a weird direction. Yeah. One. But it might work. Maybe uh, maybe an AI can come up with a new science. It's true. Why am I being so closed minded? I don't know. Why are you? Because I, everybody thinks their own opinions right. <laughs> right. And in, in the case of science fiction, 
I don't think it matters too much. So I like to fight. Hmm. I like to fight for the uh, my predictions that don't matter. Right. Makes me feel good. What if they cloned an AI? I bet that thing could come up with some sciencey shit. That'd probably be the easiest thing ever. Hmm. But then there's always like the, uh, uh, like the, the the dam spilleth over. Uh, end of times theory. Like, why doesn't a black hole devour existence? It just hasn't yet. It takes time. It's very vast out there. But why is it not just like a lot faster? Like, it's maybe we were maybe we're inside of a black hole. Well, you're you're already explaining the why these there's no reason to think something will ever become uncontrollable. Hmm. Like we, we blew up, we were like, oh, we can't blow up an atomic bomb. It's going to destroy the atmosphere and destroy everything. But we did it and it, it, did it anyway. we did it a few times. And, you know, everybody's still around a little bit. Hang in there. Can't say the same for some things, but here we are. Where? Where? Oh, where? Where are you at? One one two zero nine. Under. Has there ever been a sewer chat meetup? There's no agenda meetups. I've I've been to a couple of those. Where did those happen? Uh, the first one I went to was in uh, Jersey. There was a couple in. Uh, there was like two, or three in Manhattan, uh, and that was about it. Yeah. No, there was like two in Manhattan. I remember. Yeah. When can we have a sewer chat meetup? <sighs> We're having one right now. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, queers. When you cheer somebody, what do you say? Do you say cheers or do you say something else? In the sewer, sometimes we say chairs. No, that's ducky. We say good night. All right. I think the uh, the show is coming to a close. I think there's a ghost somewhere. <laughs> that's fine, though, because he also sent a, a vial of Bigfoot toenail shavings. I'm planning on... Uh, don't worry what I do with it. If I sell it on the black market or use it, that's up to me to decide. My big fail, big fail, nail, big toe, big foot, big toe on the big foot, toenail shavings. What I do with it is my own business, okay? You don't need to know what I'm doing with my big foot toenail shavings, aphrodisiacs. Oh, wait, what's going on on Twitch? Nothing. Wait, we're going to go listen to uh, maybe something cool. The, the song, the songery, if they're uh, live, we'll go check that out. That'd be fun to listen to right now. But, you know, before we listen to that, let's listen to uh, me say goodnight to you. Good night, sewer chatters. Thank you for experiencing the uh, unraveling and the uh, the tearing and the paranormal and the uh, the instance that life is the, the things are said sometimes by people they're only here for 
60 something years and then they might have a stroke in a hotel room. Also, they entertained you. Um, I think Full House and uh, America's Funniest Home Videos. America's Funniest Home Videos was like the beginning of the internet, in my opinion. The America's F A AFV with Bob Saget was uh, Internet 1.0. Now we're in whatever we are in now. It's, it, the internet goes deeper than that, but either way. Uh, if, if nobody's hitting the head with a rock or wants to do that to you, but they have a different opinion than you. Just listen to it. It's weird that people just hate people these days. Like, openly. On all sides. Either way, let's listen to... Um, Action HM? I don't even... Action, Action with Psychedelic. Thank you for hanging out in the sewer. I'll see you guys next week. We're going to have Fletcher. That's going to be fun. I think he's taking the day off the next day. He's going to call in sick. He's like, drunk. It'll be a fun time. Uh, cheers to everybody. That joke sucked too. Also, it was like fucking twice as long as like 10 minutes long. Me speeding it up made it five minutes. I think it was cut from the aristocrats. I didn't see that movie. Did, did like everybody tell that same joke? Let me look this up before I go, because I never watched The Aristocrats. If anybody's in the chat that could tell me something about that. Aristocrats. Bob Saget. Was he, Bob Saget even in it? Or was The Aristocrats just, like, trying to get comedians to tell the worst jokes? I don't even know if he... Oh, that was him making fun of it. Okay. GG Bob Saget, thank you for all the um, nights of laughs. Let's listen to the song, and we'll be back next week with more Nick the Rat. Thank you for hanging out. Psychedelic. Psychedelic.
More than ever, underground music spreads internationally. France has traveled with the party goers and the DJs from Goa to Brazil. Brazil, 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 Need your strength for the dark days ahead. Mina? Doctor? Yeah? How did Lucy die? Huh? Was she in great pain? Yeah, she was in great pain. Then we cut off her head and drove a stake through her heart and burned it, and then she found peace. Doctor! Please. Don't kill the animals! Rats have rights! 